So I continue to uh, look into the results of many fastest rush analysis that I carried out. So I'm going to scroll down to the so-called barebone essentials of the results and the first facet is right here. The results basically uh, can be read in different ways but I think the most um, useful way of reading it would be to look at uh, first of all look at the observed average this column here and also uh, take into account the total counts and total scores and also fair measures so let, let's just look at this chunk first uh, we have observed average which is uh, because we have a scale from 1 to 4 the observed score that uh, this student that student number 5 has has received is 455 from all the writers that have attempted to score him uh, to score her uh, so here um, the total count is 135 that's the total count of the scores so this student has been scored for 135 times that's uh, she has received 135 scores so if you divide this by this you will get the observed average which is uh, sorry divide this one the total score by uh, the total counts you will get the observed average so let me just do a quick calculation for you here and and see whether I can get that uh, 455 uh, that's the overall score that this student has received from all the raters uh, divided by 135 135 that's the number of times that raters have scored this student on average because there are 15 items and there are 13 raters so equals 3.37 yeah almost almost the same 3.37 uh, now 3.37 also includes the severity or, or is affected by the severity level of the raters altogether so we want to take away the that severity or maybe leniency uh, that is affecting this score is it possible to do so yes mathematically it's possible so it's converted into uh, a score which is called fair uh, measure average or fair average for short which is 3.48 meaning that this score will change into 3.48 after you take away the effects of raters which is a, a pretty cool thing that you can do in fastest analysis but you can't do in other types of analysis for example if you do Cohen's kappa uh, which I have uh, presented in another video you can't do this sort of analysis now this is then converted into a measure which is called uh, logit or log odd units that's the units of the, that measurement and is uh, for this student is 3.32 so the interesting thing is that even though the observed average is 3.37 for this student and uh, for the second student the ob observed average is 3.45 uh, you see this one is higher however uh, when you convert their scores to fair average measures or fair measure average averages uh, you'll find out that their position shifts and the student the first student that's number five moves up and ends up right on, on top of the scale and becomes the first student or the top student among these students and receives the measure of 3.32 whereas the second one who's uh, observed scores was higher relatively higher than the second one uh, than the first one uh, receives a fair average score of 3.47 and as a result a measure of 2.29 these measures are uh, visualized already in the in the facets that the facet map that I showed you so the units are, of those measures are here so if you want to find those people uh, number five is here it, it was around 2.30 something 32 so it's, it's around here followed by the second student number 12 and uh, followed by student number nine of course we can't exactly tell uh, the 
the ability level of these students just by eyeballing this map because we don't have the exact uh, measurement units here but by scrolling down and by going to this table 7.11 you can easily identify their measurements so as you see the range is between 0 0.74 which belongs to student number 10 all the way up to uh, number f student number 5 which has as I said the measurement of uh, 2.32 logits logit is the units now the uh, model uh, standard error of measurement is not that high I should say uh, this basically means that the actual measurement or the actual measure for ability measure for this student falls between uh, 2.32 plus and minus 0 0.15 which is a good level of precision for an in-class kind of low stakes uh, peer assessment the other thing that I would wanted to draw your attention to is infit mean square values and outfit mean square values they also have Z standardized as you see ZSTD Z standardized versions so what these basically mean let me highlight it for you so you can see what I'm trying to tell you this column here as well as this column I've explained these extensively in other videos so I don't go to too much details as I mentioned before they they like some quality control statistics and tell us whether these scores that we have achieved for students are really reliable or if they are affected by any sources of what we call construct irrelevant variance or are they affected by some sources that are unknown to us these are good uh, indicators as to whether they, they are reliable or not and by just looking at the statistics I immediately say that almost everything is fine with the students because the uh, reliable uh, range for these two statistics is between 0.5 and 1.5 for fastest analysis and as you can see everything falls within that range 0 0.5 to 1.5 I don't see a, a very large deviation from uh, those two uh, from from the range that I mentioned in addition we have these standard scores and they should fall between minus 2 to plus 2 of course we do see deviations from minus 2 plus 2 or to be more specific is actually 1.96 plus and minus but the point is that uh, when your sample size is small like the sample size we have these two statistics can be easily inflated or deflated which is the case here so we often uh, rely on uh, infit mean square values and outfit mean square values for a uh, good measurement now I want to scroll down this is exactly the same uh, representation of students ability levels but the difference is that they have been arranged in this time round based on their um, uh, this time round is based on their outfit mean square values so as you can see the outfit has been let me draw this line for you as well and uh, the outfit uh, the outf outfit has been uh, the students have been arranged based on their outfit from 1.21 21 all the way down to 0 0.68 so this is another good way of making sense of your data and uh, usually the outfit and infit mean square values are very similar or close to each other unless you have very large deviations uh, at certain points of the scale and one last thing before I uh, move on from from this part of the analysis I should uh, remind you of the reliability of, uh, of our our analysis so the reliability has been uh, presented here and here as well this is for the students well basically and they are the same statistics exactly the same uh, again I have discussed these in details in other videos what I would like to say here is that we have achieved very good reliability for our students because it's above 0 0.8 so the raters have done a good job in differentiating between students ability levels we also have about 3.45 uh, distinguishable levels of ability among students 
is pretty much analogous to those three levels that are identified just by eyeballing. So yes, students are significantly different in terms of uh, their presentation scores uh, which were given to them by their peers.